And the next one is um, for the human resource uh, report. Mr. Claire asked, or Michael had asked to have that removed from our consent to our, <coughs> sorry, um, to our action. So my issue, did you want to do a motion first on that? Um, or just okay. discuss it? One second. Sorry, I just got to get back to my All right, so I need a motion for, I just want to get the right. I'm um, the, the human, board. Yeah, the the human resources development department. I'm the that we approve the human resources board report for May 6, 2014. Thank you, Mayor. Second. Second. Thank you. So here's a letter I wrote with some documentation. It's just that I'm concerned that we, you know, it seems that we just violated a lot of our own processes in doing this. It was, you know, when you look at um, Slasa's agreement, written understanding, or the SLTA written agreement, um, it, it looks like, you know, we, my understanding was the process to, to do these principles was that the administration would do transfers into a patient, and then the ones that had openings, we'd follow the process that was outlined in the Slasa written understanding where the community would have the opportunity with teachers and employees or staff on the school to interview uh, principals that were uh, applying for the, those open positions. Um, I sent an email asking for clarification a couple of weeks ago to the superintendent and didn't get an answer. So, you know, I still don't understand why, uh, you know, this doesn't follow that process as outlined. Okay. So I, I don't see how it doesn't follow the process because these are basically reassignments on this human resources report. Well, I think the one that, well, one, I think the one that, um, I've heard about it is, is the assistant principal um, at Northwest becoming a principal without input from I mean that I assume is a um, it, I mean it's a different position it's not across a lateral position it's it's moving up and so I think that what I heard was that parents wondered why um, this position went to an assistant without the input and without a committee, et cetera, et cetera. So that, that's the one I heard about. I don't know about if there are any others. But well, there's one person from not, that's not even in the district that got hired. Um, I'll give you a contact with you. Um, yeah. But so that was, that was where I heard. I mean, that's, that's why I'm concerned about this, and I'm glad Michael did hold that I didn't call about it. But, because that was, um, we didn't follow the process for Northwest, at least I'm not aware of it. So the detailed process, we can go back over that again. Uh, apologize, Michael, if um, uh, the question you asked two weeks ago, which is the same one you asked four weeks before, that uh, Patrick did answer for you. If you needed that answer again, I apologize. But the process related to uh, whether it's a turnaround school or an open school is like you described that after rotations and transfers, what's open, plus in the turnaround school, you're making selection based on those that participate in the BEI. And Patrick does have some additional detail if you have to share. So tell me what the turnaround was. Is Northwest considered a turnaround? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're saying there's different ways of selecting the principal for and a turnaround school than there is for a So the, the turnaround, the schools are participating in the turnaround initiative. We have gotten had the candidates go through an interview process, what's called the behavioral event interview. Right, I and we have used an outside consultant with us. So Patrick, just, so for that one, for turnaround school, you're saying they don't need to go through the parent committee and the... No, and, and what we did is articulate to the school, all of our administrators, and what you are uh, receiving is in a a document that I attached an email to all of our administrators in the organization asking them uh, and explaining the available positions that they may want to right. express this, their interest in. So you see up here the lead director position, which is at the top. The second um, category of folks are our elementary, our school support team members. The third one are the um, school support members that will work with the turnaround schools. And the last one, are the, um, the process that we've used for our school principals involved in our turnaround um, work. 
So we asked and explained to them that they would go through this BEI interview process, ask for individuals to express their interest in the BEI process. Um, we then uh, said, indicated that they may or may not get invited to an interview, and the individuals who have gone through the interview and emerged a successful candidate with the right competencies uh, would be considered for the appointments to our turnaround schools. And if they had gone through a BEI previously, that they would not need to go through another BEI interview process again. And uh, Ms. Nance at um, Northwest has gone through a BEI interview prior to this year. So when you say an interview, it's not with fac faculty or, or parents? Correct. It it's was with a, an administrator here at the district office? It was uh, a group of administrators here at the school. Um, uh, <coughs> one of our consultants from our partnership. So, and I guess I just was, mis I just didn't know that um, in our, you know, these turnaround schools had a different process for selecting principals. Michael? So my question, if we back up a little, you know, when we talk about the, the turnaround schools or this program with the UEA that's driving this, is I can find no record where the board has voted and agreed to, to have that program in our district. And then when I look at the written agreement, where it talks about SICs, it says the council shall establish and implement procedures and programs for the individual school consistent with the policies of the board and approved by the faculty through consensus or ratification. So a number of these schools and the teachers there are complaining to me that, that they had no say so in the fact that that, that school was going to be part of this program. And so, um, you know, and then when they've asked, you know, other people, they get told, well, that's, you know, that's too bad, that's just the way it is. So I'm not seeing anywhere where the board approved that, where an SIC has approved that program in the school. So who's dictating that this program is going to be in the school and then allow it to disintegrate uh, shared governance on a local level as, as we've established it? Well, I'm not so sorry. Um the turnaround initiative came about in, in terms of working with the State Office of Education, working with us, and looking about how do we provide additional support to some of our schools who are struggling. And um, that was the impetus for the turnaround work. And um, in terms of our coming together as a collective administrative team here at the district office and looking at this as this is something that we want to support and encourage, I believe we've talked about the partnership here with the board on several different occasions in the past in terms of what's coming about from this. I don't know that there's been any formal um, action, as you indicate, Michael, in, in terms of this. Well, I guess the question I'm hearing Michael ask is, um, if this is a new program in a school, and my understanding is by the contract it says if you have a new program coming into a school, the school votes on it. Mm -hmm. And so I think what he's asking is, does the school have an option Right. I mean, uh, voting to be a turnaround. If the, if you think it's a good idea, um, can, do can they have, do they have a voice in that and saying yes or no to that new program coming into the building? The, the the work with our partnership is not a model or a program to come in in terms of um, what happens in the school. It is a leadership development model, and so our work is working with the principals and helping them understand how they. Uh, think about change, how they think about um, using data, which are the pieces that we as a district have been promoting and supporting along the way. And it's um, the uh, partnership doesn't come in and tell us how something should be done. It is us working together with the school to look at how that might get played out at the individual schools. So I believe the schools are involved in that process. And, in terms of how do we um, use the interims, what kind of PLCs, what activities occur in those PLCs, which are the uh, efforts in terms of the leadership for the school, the principal, and helping them gain those skills. So we're saying it's not a program. It's I don't. My sense is that it's, it would not be a program. It is a leadership uh, development model, and that's where we focus on the principal. We're taking them through training where. Um, helping them understand change process, how do you engage uh, folks and getting them to come along with you, all of those kinds of things, which is really focusing on the administrator. Okay. Tiffany? So I feel that we've gotten off track of the motion that was on the floor, and we need to come back to that and the discussion directly of the human resources report, please. 
Michael. So help me understand how did this, um, when we look at the SLASA procedures for filling a vacancy with the principal, how did, I understand what you said, I don't agree with, with your definitions, but I understand the logic that you're presenting here. So the part I'm missing here, how did we take the leap then that we were going to suspend the, the procedures with SLASA in terms of filling vacancies and just do them like we did them here on the report? The, uh, let me share one other document with you because I think that uh, might help a little bit. And it is um, a working document for us with SLASA because we've been engaged with SLASA and what they have asked for in terms of um, I was just going to send it this way, sorry. In, in terms of, so this is proposed negotiated language with SLASA, and they've come to us in the past and talked and asked about principal selection process. They want a process that um, recognizes some of the reassignments, transfer um, pieces that occur in our district. They want to, a process that allows them to know about potential changes and reassignments before the last day of the school year kinds of things. So this particular language tries to capture reassignments, uh, transfers, um, how that all happens. And this is something that we have been working with SLASA on to uh, the point that they feel good and comfortable with this proposed language as well. As we're waiting until we get into our negotiation cycle this year to really kind of um, get this formally approved for us. But this is something that we use in terms of soliciting, informing the uh, SLASA members and, and all administrators that initial document that I gave you about how we're advertising the positions, opening that up, giving them an opportunity to provide um, their interest to us in wanting to be considered. So this is um, what we've talked about is aligns itself with that document as well. That's not formally approved yet. Thank you. Okay, any further discussion? Great, so seeing none, all those in favor, Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Oh, no. Thank you. All right.